Hi, this is Jojo with Queen of Life Tarot, and today I'm going to do a review of the Comedic Tarot as well as a reading with these beautiful Comedic Ancient Egyptian cards. I'm so excited about this. Now, I've had these cards for about, I'd say, a good couple of months or so. Probably, let's see, today it's November. I got them in September, I believe. Yeah, so I have them about for a good two months. And these are just the most beautiful cards I've ever seen. I feel like so much effort and research and heart and soul was put into this deck here. And it was worth every penny that was spent. It's the most expensive deck I have, but it's also worth it. I feel like they should have charged even more. But this is the best ever. And... I'm gonna go over what it comes with. So this is the box it comes with. Beautiful box, okay? And then inside the box is where the, um, you know, the cards in the book go. And we have this Jasper stone right here that's shaped into one of the um, symbols. It resembles an ankh, but I'm not sure if that's an ankh or not. And then these are the two books it comes with. So it has the Comedic Tarot, which gives you the meaning of each card and the history behind every character. Okay. And then we have the Veil of Asset, Tales of the Goddess, which is so powerful and interesting. Read. Okay. And so here are the two books that it comes with. If I can get that in the frame here awesome details like the art is absolutely amazing so I'm gonna show you it comes with a pouch a velvet pouch this is what the tarot deck comes in this beautiful velvet pouch here and let's go over the actual cards and I'll show you what these beautiful cards look like all right so now let's get into this deck and look at these Absolutely beautiful cards. I have one on display right here, but let's just, let me just let you see. Let's just, okay, just look at the details. The art, the colors, look how vibrant that is. Look at the vibrant colors. Here, let me show you a few of my favorites here. Let me just see. I like this. This is the Ten of Ankh, which is like the Ten of Cups in other decks. Beautiful. Okay. Look how vivid that is. Look at the colors. Okay. What else? Which else is my favorite? I have a few favorites here. But I just want you to see how beautiful this deck is. It doesn't really matter which card it is. But let's stick to the most positive cards. This one, Nine of Scarabs. Oh, I mean, right here. So this woman, she's like, oh goodness, it's like, it's doing the opposite of what my, what I'm trying to show you. So this is a, a woman, like a queen, sitting, you know, in luxury. And here's a, um, and she's being served. And she's just sitting in luxury. This is one of my favorite cards. And I actually get this often in my readings. And that's so befitting because, you know, I enjoy being served. <laughs> I enjoy being treated like the queen I am, okay? Look at that. Beautiful. What else? Uh, there's a whole bunch of nice, beautiful... Well, all of them. Each and every card is beautiful okay regardless of how negative it is you know here's queen nefertiti look at that and you see one thing i love about these cards is the gold the gold engravement so the gold engravement like on the border is just so luxurious and these cards they're really thick and durable they're not paper thin like some cards okay even the side angle of the card is gold so they they really did an excellent job with these cards and i'm sorry you guys like whatever i'm trying to it's like the camera's doing the opposite of what i'm trying to do so it's hard for me to focus it properly but let me uh show you like if i 
if I stack all the cards up, you'll see what I mean with the side being gold as well. So if I stack all the cards up like this, you see that? It's gold. Isn't that nice? Beautiful. Like this is like the highest quality tarot deck ever, okay? And then the book is descriptive and it tells you what each card means, the history of the character or person. It goes into great detail about each and every one of them. And then it tells you what what it means in other standard deck of tarot. So for example, the Ten of Cups is that card I just showed you. And it's called, it's called the Ten of Anks here. And so the booklet will tell you that it's representative. Oh, I'm sorry. So the book will tell you that it's equivalent to, you know, the Ten of Cup and other decks. But it's called the Ten of Anks here. So you kind of have to learn these cards because, you know, intuitively you could pick up on the energy of each card. I don't always have to look at the book to interpret the meaning of a card not always sometimes you can intuitively know what the card is so for example this one right here let's see you see that okay let me put it so this one right here it's a lady she's standing in the middle of the ocean and you can see there's a lot of uncertainty and when you read the definition it'll give you that vibe so just by looking at the picture they say a picture says a thousand words so we don't always need to actually read the definition unless we need clarity of what it means. But intuitively, you could tell by the vibration of the card, what the picture depicts. You see, there's a lot of uncertainty right there. Okay. For example, so I'd like to give a nice reading using these beautiful cards. And if I need to read the book to go on a definition, I most certainly will. But uh, let's go for it, shall we? Let's do a reading. So I'm not going to make this a specific reading. I'm just going to say whoever, whatever, whatever subject is on your mind right now, let this reading give you some clarity about it, okay? So this is going to be like a mystery reading. It could be for whatever is on your mind right now. So I'm going to shuffle it. I like to shuffle three times. That's my preferred number of shuffle. These are my favorite deck of cards of ever. I fell in love with it the moment I received it. I knew I received a masterpiece. Special for African Americans, black people, because we're not often represented in a lot of you know oracle and tarot cards sometimes we are but a lot of times when it comes to egyptian or kemetic uh ancient deities you know they've been whitewashed but that's why i value these cards so much because there's none of that here okay none of that going on here and it's just a beautiful masterpiece I think this person should have charged double for all the hard work that went into making these. So the first card is Five of Scepters. I'll go into that. Based on the picture, it looks like a Five of Sticks, if you ask me. It looks like that's the equivalent. This is the Justice card. This Amit and Two of Scepters. And I'm going to go into each one, so don't worry. I know it's totally different. And I think I'll do... I like to do seven. That's usually a typical number of cards I like to pull. But yeah, let's just go with the seven. This one is Scribe of Ink. Um, Queen of Anks. This look like an Empress type card. Giving me Empress type energy. Eight of Anks. Hmm, could be Eight of Cups. But I'll go into it in the book to clarify. And then the final card is Warrior of Scarabs. So I'm going to go into the booklet and go over every meaning. So that whatever is on your mind, whoever is on your mind, these cards can give some guidance and clarity. Okay. So the first one is Five of Scepters. The Five of Scepters show five men fighting one another with scepters. Looking more closely though, we see that no one is being struck and no one is injured. They are merely play acting with no other apparent purpose than to create chaos. 
Each man wears a different style of clothing representing their variety of backgrounds, points of views, and beliefs. So upright, it means conflict, disagreements, tension, diversity, anarchy, drama, ideological argument. Okay, that's the first card. Next card is justice, which just says Amit. So let's go there. So Amit is the devourer of souls, it is the personification of divine justice and retribution. She has the head of a crocodile, the body of a lion, and the hind parts of a hippopotamus. Three of the largest, deadliest man-eating creatures known to the ancient Egyptians. It is she who eats the hearts of the unworthy, condemning them to eternal damnation. But only those who have been found unworthy after their hearts are weighed on the scales of the great hall of the two truths. As the devourer of souls, Amit represents the final word in justice. If our traveler's heart is judged to be unworthy on the scales of Ma'at, Amit ensures justice is satisfied by devouring his heart and condemning him to eternal damnation. The Amit card 11 is interchangeable with the justice card found in other decks. In this card, Amit stands in the foreground in front of a lake of fire in the barren lands of Amenta. The Western Lands of the Dead. So it means fairness, consequences, karmic justice, law, legal disputes, life lessons, cause and effect. Divine justice, just reward, cleansing, purging evil. And let me go back to the Five of Scepters because I forgot to... Um... So next is the Two of Scepters. Okay, Two of Scepters shows a man standing atop a tower. He holds a globe in one hand indicative of potential worldwide opportunities as he surveys the terrain the long winding nile stretching to the horizon surrounded by fertile land on both sides the man holds a second scepter in hand as another rests against the wall of the tower a signal that he has not decided to make his move yet the land before him is fertile but the river is winding indicating plenty of opportunity for success but a potentially long and twisted path to get there. So the definition is decisions, planning, discovery, options, opportunity, preparation, difficult journey, international travel. And so our fourth card is Scribe of Anks. It says, I'm Hotep, or the one who comes in peace, was chancellor to the Pharaoh de Djoser. Among the great polymaths, many accomplishments were architecting de Djoser's step pyramid and serving as the high priest of Amun-Ra at Paleopolis. Considered a great author of wisdom texts and a great physician, his healing powers were renowned. He was one of only two commoners to be deified after death, granting him a status equivalent to that of a demigod. The scribe of Angst features the Imhotep sitting on a stone stool at the banks of the Nile. Ceremonial beads hang from his waist as he contemplates the golden ank symbol of life in his hand. A fish leaps through the waves as the river flows by, while tall grasses and flowers surround him, representing nature. The far bank is lush with reeds and dotted with palm trees before low, gently rolling hills representing the fertile ideas that surround the fresh blue flowing waters of the subconscious. So the meaning of this card is intuition, youthfulness, idealism, creativity, curiosity, kindness, dreaming, spirituality, recognition of great accomplishments, numerous ideas, and connection to nature. All right, and so the next one is Queen of Anks. It says, Teddy Sherry, mother of King. Teddy Sherry was the matriarch of the Egyptian royal family of the late 17th and early 18th dynasties. She was selected by Sequenere Taya I, despite her non-royal birth, to be his great royal wife. She served as queen to Sequenere Taya I as the regent to her son Sequenere Taya II, as well as her grandsons Kemos and Amos in their war against the Hyksos, Hyksos if I'm pronouncing that correctly. She was one of the wisest, longest serving, and beloved royal advisors in history. The Queen of Angst card features Queen Tetasheri sitting by the Nile holding the Angst symbol of life in her hand. She wears the Votu headdress of the goddess Mut and representing her status as a powerful matriarch. The waters of the Nile represent the flow of the subconscious mind. The Ibis, symbolic of the wisdom of Tahuti, 
travels through the subconscious hunting for sustenance. So the definition of this card is caring, femininity, warmth, sensitivity, kindness, compassion, emotionally stable, and beauty. Upward social mobility, consistency, enduring, accomplished progeny, wisdom. And then we have the Eight of Angst. So let's see what that means. So the Eight of Angst is the equivalent of the Eight of Cups. And this card shows a lone man turning his back on the angst, the blessings of the God laid at his feet. The angsts are arranged in such a way that there appears to be a gap in a signal that he suffers a spiritual and emotional divide. Hunched over, the man sadly shuffles away from the river towards distant mountains. The dark waters of the river are a representation of his gloomy attitude and dark subconscious. The full moon and the night sky illuminates the man's path and the moon's slight reflection on the river signifies the sliver of hope that remains present in the wanderer's sight. So this definition is abandonment, walking away, escapism, disappointment, loneliness, ungratefulness, sliver of hope, gloomy attitude, spiritual, emotional, turmoil. And so the last card is Warrior of Scarabs. The Mary Anu, or Young Heroes, were a cast of ancient chariot-mounted warriors in the Pharaoh's military. Composed primarily of the sons of noblemen and the rich upper classes, these charioters were the light cavalry of the Egyptian army, and they also served as the Pharaoh's emissaries during peacetime. The warrior of Scarab stands on his chariot platform overlooking the Nile. He deliberately surveys the landscape over contemplating his plan of action. The warrior is dressed in his fine uniform with golden trim, symbolizing his success and station. His shield has the symbol of the golden scarab on it, representing his material wealth. The meaning of this card is hardworking, practical, routine, loyal, ambitious, persistence, conscientious, productivity. The meaning of this card is hardworking, practical, routine, loyal, ambitious, persistence, productivity, deliberation, success, high social status. So let me go over these cards once again without reading every book. So this one is just drama oriented. This card represents there's a drama going on here. Nothing too serious, but enough to disturb your peace. Okay. And here you have justice following that, which means everything will come into balance of the situation that may be on your mind. And this two acceptors is, this is someone who's planning the future. So this is probably you. So you're looking out, you're planning, you're seeing what steps you need to take to get to where you go but you can see where you want to go you can see the vision of what, where, what you're trying to get to what your goal is and you're just weighing the journey to get there pretty much okay that's what that card represents and then you have the scribe of angst this one is a very positive card it's uh one of high self-esteem like confidence and knowing knowing where you stand mentally and here's the thing, like I mentioned in previous reading, cards are only a guidance and it's current energy usually. And it's one of many possibilities. So regardless of what's showing up in these cards, it's about the energy that's in them. And you can change that at every, any given moment. So this is why you can have separate readings and they be the total opposite that's because they're one of many possibilities and your vibe can change at every any moment but the possibilities are still endless for you so it's never going to be just okay the cards say this so that's the only truth no you can change that truth at any moment by your focus your concentration your manifesting your mindset this is just one, one of many possibilities based on your current energy so here this is about self-confidence you're clear on where you stand who you are okay and here's queen of angst this one is the feminine version of this so there's a masculine and a feminine so this could be about a relationship if that's what's on your mind and it looks like they're both on the same level and they're coming together and they have something to offer each other but both of them are confident and sure of who they are, what they are, and, and what they want. So this is probably you and your person because this is masculine energy, feminine energy. 
they're facing each other. They're facing the same direction and they're offering the same exact thing. It's like equal, okay? But here we have the Eight of Angst, which is like the Eight of Cups and it shows disappointment, walking away. It's on a negative side, okay? But there's a sliver of hope as the description said. There's a sliver of hope still, but there is a essence or feeling of giving up, so to speak. Okay, but there's a sliver of hope here. But we end with the Warrior of Scarabs right here, which is a very positive card, positive outlook, and you're only going up from here. So this is about wealth and prosperity and moving forward in a happy, prosperous direction. So this could be with someone or this can be on your own. So let me use an angel card to clarify the entire reading to summarize it up okay just gonna be as a nice oracle guidance to summarize this entire reading here all right so this final card here says this angel says to block out distractions it says your life purpose and other priorities need your undivided attention so it's time for you to take charge of your schedule and working environment by turning off electronics and avoiding anyone or anything that distracts you from what's important. You already know what these distractions are and you have the power to responsibly block them out. So that summarizes this reading. I hope you guys enjoyed the review of this deck and these cards and I hope this reading was helpful to you. I thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.